Makhashule. From politics uh, to Beatles, and if you've been looking uh, at the story, you would have seen a recent headline, a warning of a tree apocalypse. Uh, this is serious. A tiny beetle is killing trees in South Africa. And we're going to bring you an interview tonight that we were unable to finish last week. Fear is rising that the massive man-made forest in Johannesburg could be decimated. This little beetle, uh, the name uh, Polyphagus shot hole borer, it bores holes into the trunks and and then spreads a fungus it carries, which cuts off the system that transports water and nutrients, and the trees die. Already we know that parts of Joburg are affected, uh, other parts of South Africa, um, Northern Cape, the government there has spoken about pecan nut trees being destroyed. And we do know that some action is being taken because there was a meeting today in Johannesburg, city parks and academics involved. Uh, let's speak to one of those academics. Uh, we're joined by from the University of Pretoria, um, Associate Professor in Microbiology, Willem de Beer. Thank you for being with us, uh, Prof. But firstly, I, I want to go back where we sort of ended last week, looking at the, the scope of this, and for people who are just coming in, is this a crisis? Can we talk about um, uh, trees uh, being decimated? Yes, certainly. I mean, it is a big problem. The beetle has been in the country, we're not exactly sure how long, probably five years already. But typically these things are, the initial stage is very low, you don't detect them. And then we started picking up problems last year. First, KwaZulu Natal, Peter Maritzburg, Durban, um, street trees dying. Then here in Johannesburg in the beginning of this year, um, lots of trees dying and it has been dying for a couple of years already. And then in Northern Cape in the middle of um, this year where we found it on pecan nut trees. And then also down in the Southern Cape, Georgia, Nisna area, where our big fear is really that it's going to move into the natural forests. Mm. And, and you were explaining last week, so maybe just quickly recap how uh, blocks of firewood uh, taken from one place to another can, can lead to infestations all over the place. Yes, so if a tree that's infested with a beetle is cut down and chopped up and this wood is being sold as firewood, um, we have shown that this wood is actually transporting living beetles and wherever you're going to dump that wood for the next couple of weeks, those beetles might actually still keep on emerging. So you really can spread the problem wide by just moving dead wood around. Now the big question is, uh, if, if people want to be responsible, what do you do? How do you know, firstly, if you've got a tree that's infested in your garden? Let's start there. Okay, so you would typically see some signals on the tree. It differs a lot between different house trees. That's the problem. The beetle attack many, many different species of trees. So on some trees it's resin drops, on some trees it's just holes. Some trees there's a little bit of powder. And on our website people can see the different types of symptoms with photographs. And if you see that, uh, then also start looking. Sometimes you see the dying branches first, and, and mm. that might be an indicator that there's a problem in the tree. So the big question is whether this beetle is reproducing in that tree. And if it is, then that tree needs to be cut down um, and chopped up, and preferably be chipped and composted. Mm. Uh, that is the most effective way of, of getting rid of the problem. So I wouldn't know how to cut down uh, a tree. Maybe you put Paul, uh, call people in, but you want to take it to a safe place. You want to make sure if there are little beetles in there, they, they don't spread to other gardens around. Um, and, and a big concern has been in Johannesburg. We don't have that facility yet, right? You're right. So, so we've been asking city parks for some time that they should really dedicate some dumping sites specifically uh, to do this so that tree fellows um, can go and dump wood and also city parks themselves in specific places where the trees can be dealt with responsibly. The good news is that today um, in, a, in a very long meeting with city parks and a steering committee meeting there, um, they have made a decision and they will announce quite soon where these dumping sites will be. Um, so that will be uh, hopefully within the next week or mm. two. And, and how pertinent is this? I mean, it sounds like this is spreading far and wide very quickly. So, so you need action from municipal authorities here? Yes. Across um, the country? In across fact. the country. Um, George has been a, quite a good example. They, we were there in April and they actually 
within a month or so, so they started setting up plan, plan, plans to, to deal with the problem. They informed the public in a proper way, um, and they actually started uh, uh, taking wood to dedicated sites. Um, but they have also had court cases against them already uh, with branches of trees falling on cars and stuff like that. So that is one of the risks that these mun municipalities... When you start cutting down, down trees, yeah. Well, not only cutting them down, but um, trees die, they fall over. And, and if you don't remove these dead trees, you are liable um, as a municipality. Mm. Yeah. Okay, dealing with it responsibly, uh, quarantining these, these trees and, and the wood from the tree, will that stop the, the, the spread, these little beetles are causing a there's, lot of damage? Uh, there's no way we're going to stop this completely, but we can certainly slow it down. Um, the other advantage is if you remove the trees that are really susceptible and where the beetles breed fast, because those are the trees that get infested first, um, then you can can take the source out of an environment. And in California, I've recently been there, they have shown just that, that by removing the most susceptible trees from an environment, the impact of the beetle is going mm, down mm. Um, with time. Because, uh, firstly, it sounds like Johannesburg has lagged here. We, we're taking action quite late. So it's been slow, yes. Uh, there, there were claims that 10, uh, there are 10 million trees, but that about half a million could be lost. So, so does it look at least that uh, that, that huge amount of, of damage has been averted? So, the, I mean, uh, we're a bit hesitant in putting numbers at this stage. We're you don't still know waiting. how many are infected, we, basically. We, yeah, we don't know how many of which species of trees are there. We know which species are being infected. But at the moment, so we also ask again for city parks to supply us with um, census data of, of how many of which species are in the city. Then we'll be able to, to make predictions and also pest risk assessments in terms of what mm. the damage could be and what it is at the moment. Mm. And, and of course you want trees lining the streets, you don't want our residents uh, to, to, we've seen them up in arms, but is this in finality and very quickly a threat to food security at all? So yes, I mean, so, so not, uh, I mean, it, this thing won't go on to maize and the major food crops, but certainly on fruit trees, it's a risk. And we're working with some of the fruit crop industries and tree nut industries already um, in, in uh, just trying to see what the impact might be and how they can curb the impact. Mm. All right, thank you for your time this evening. Uh, that was Professor Willem de Beer from the University of Pretoria uh, so saying that there was a meeting today and in Johannesburg at least there will be an announcement soon of where those safe dumping sites are for trees infected. Remember, you can view any of our interviews at sabcnews.com or find us on Facebook or Twitter.